Namaskar. That's our greeting. That means thank you for being well. Oh, where the willows touch the water. Um, and that lake is called Onondaga Lake now. But at this northeast shore of that lake, he planted a great tree of peace, a very symbolic tree. It's a, um, a great white pine. And he said that this tree uh, represented the spiritual laws of the universe. And among other things that he instructed us with was that you should never challenge those laws because he said you will not prevail. So very, from the very start, this great tree with the four white roots of peace in the four directions of the earth is a big idea. And it has reached here. The roots have reached here. And um, it's had an impact in, uh, in the development of nations. The structure that he presented, and he gave it to us all together. Uh, it wasn't something that evolved or developed. It was given to us at this great meeting when he gathered these five warring nations and had them sit and had them agree to this confederation based on peace, based on fairness, equity to the people, and not only to the people, to all life, and the, the good minds, the union, the good minds together in one, one thought have great authority. And you have to put a, an emphasis on the word good. As you know, um, today we have 7.3, probably 7.4 by now, maybe even five as we sit here, billion people in the world. Uh, 1950, I was uh, 20 years old, and uh, there were 2.5 billion people in the world. And it took a long time to reach that number. So within the past 65 years, we are now seven. And you want to talk about sustainability? When you want to talk about reality, then you have to think about that. And he said that we should have a, a, a responsible connection to the earth itself. And so in our process, there's been a personification of these great elements that sustain us. So the earth, we call our mother because that's where life comes from, and that's where we come from, and that's where we're going back to. And he said that the earth is female, and therefore, he said, the women have special charge, special charge of water and life, which, of course, you do. Huge responsibility. None of us would be here without you, of course. And, and he said the men would be in charge of fire. They would be in charge of getting things together and that there would be a cooperation. And he told our leaders at that time, and there were 50, to go into the woods, he said, one by one. Tell me what you see. And one by one, they came back. I saw, I saw a turtle. He says, henceforth, that's going to be your family. So one by one, the leaders went. And there was a turtle, a beaver, and we have a beaver uh, 
chief and clan mother sitting back there. It's complex, but it's, it's functional. It's very functional. And I think that that instruction of our families being represented by nature tied us to the earth so that we don't forget who we are and we don't forget our relatives and our relations and we're not a distance from them. We are concerned. We're concerned for all the life, for all the animals. And we're tied to that. I think it was brilliant. It kept us associated. How do you instruct 7.3 billion people as to their relationship to the earth? Because if you don't understand that, you're in trouble. And certainly, we're in trouble today. We're a long ways away from that relationship. But in reality, you're right there. You're not long ways away. You're right there. But you just don't know it. You just don't honor it. You don't protect it. Consequently, we're in trouble. If you have these relatives, then obviously you have to be respectful. And I would say with indigenous peoples, wherever I've gone, if there was a law, it was a law of respect. And if everybody lived by that law alone, you wouldn't be in the trouble that we're in right now. So you have it. And that's what brought us here. And that's why we have this relationship, I think, because we, we, we think alike. We're about community. You think about community. And there is a, a, a big community. Our community extends to everything that's alive. That's a community. Everything. That's our community. We're part of it. We're not separate. And what I saw, what I saw with the, with the Sami, I said we went up there and we watched them. And uh, my son Rex and I were were at the marking. We watched the marking. We sat with them. And here and there around the world, yet today, there is a very symbiotic relationship between nature that, that's functional, and the Samis have that. What I saw was their relationship with the deer. They knew each other very well. They were very, very dependent upon each other for survival. They understood what was to take place every year. They worked with that. And I saw this most amazing relationship still here. You should be aware of that, and you should protect that. Now we'll be coming to the harvest. I don't know, they probably start next week. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's about when it starts. Uh, you know, the faith keepers, uh, um, they will sit and they will set the time for the harvest. So they could be set that time already for next week or so. And then it will be a six day ceremony of celebration life and what we have uh, been given and appreciation and songs and dances and speeches that are old and old, old. And they're basically a celebration of life. And I, I've been here for a long time, so I know as soon as it starts moving towards the dark time, everybody's going. <laughs> And then by February, you're just looking for any kind of light. So you have a lot of candles. I know you use a lot of candles. So Sami's about that. I said, you guys, you guys have the same problem. I see down Stockholm, uh, people get like this. And they said, oh, oh no, not us. I said, they've separated their, their gear into eight sections, not four. 
because of the intensity of each section. And they say when it's dark, we're out there every day, every 24 hours a day now, not just the daylight and the dark, to watch the herd, to protect the herd. Because there's big bears out there, wolves, eagles. As far as I can see, we humans are still a biological experiment. There's nothing that says we should be here. We certainly don't add. We're not adding anything to the earth. We're extracting and we're taking a lot from it. We're certainly not adding anything. Very parasitic or parasites. We eat a lot. And now, seven billion. Are you Oren Lyons? I said, yeah. She says, well, we'd like to have a conversation. I said, where are you from? From Sweden. And so we did. We had a conversation, and she filmed it and sent it over here. And it caused some kind of a uh, reaction here. So I got a call from the your postal service. They said, we're having our annual event. Will you come over here and be a speaker? And, uh, and that was the beginning. Over these 18 years that I've been coming back and forth, I've made a lot of friends and a lot of associations. And what I found out is that Sweden still keeps to the idea of community. You still work you know, in community, and you must maintain that. You must pay attention to that and keep that going because that's really your strength. You have leaders with compassion. You want to have a better life. And uh, the women see that. You leave it to men to choose leaders. They're going to choose the army guys. This choice that the women have of choosing the leaders and not only choosing leaders, but they have the responsibility. They own that title, and they can take it back. They can remove the leaders. They don't just put them up, they can remove them. Women are fundamental to life, as you know. So I see that battle going on in the US today. Uh, one of the primary uh, runners for the Democratic Party is uh, Mrs. Clinton. And her, one of her mantras is fair and justice to the women. And we got four people and came back in and, and helped to revitalize the, the process. But it was the clan mother choosing us. It's an interesting to me. It's a commitment to life. It's a commitment that you make. And it's for life. As long as you're there, consensus it means talk, it means adjust, it means give ground, it means deliberation. It takes longer to reach consensus, but the decision is stronger. And you don't eat, they're preparing for the food. And that day, the men are doing the cooking because the women have to be there because they raise leaders. And the, the speaker will say to the clan mother, bring forth your candidate. This whole idea of being consumers uh, is running out of things to consume. Obviously, you're going to have to change. So I think uh, Sweden has really a good opportunity, the best opportunity to make that change and take that direction. Uh, and the world leads, needs leaders always. And so I think that we'll have a common statement when we're going to Paris. Do we? It's not all about money, although it's all about money. It is not. And if you take that position, you're in trouble. We're here 
you know, we're here as a delegation to, to make this relationship a better one, yeah. to polish this chain with that two-row belt that your Minister of, of uh, Trade, Commerce, <coughs> held the other day. There's a chain, a covenant chain that goes with that belt. It's peace, friendship. For as long as the sun rises in the east, that's in the west. For as long as the waters run downhill. And for as long as the grass is green. They're two parallel on a field of white, which is life, the river of life. We're going down the river of life side by side. We're hooked together on these chains. I'm not steering your ship and you're not steering my canoe. Mutual respect. The indigenous bring something to this discussion and that's the long value. That's the long vision, seven generations. If you can get your leaders to raise their head up and look, it's pretty murky out there right now for your great, great grandchildren and for your grandchildren. There's a great philosopher from the United States. You might know him or you might have heard about him, you know. He's a baseball player, I call him Yogi Berra. He was a catcher, remember Yogi? Famous. And he was famous for some of his observations. And one of them was, it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> and that's right where the hell we're at right now. It ain't over till it's over. So we have options. And the option is, as leaders of your families and as leaders of your community, you stand up and you be careful who you choose as your leaders. You look them over pretty hard. You make sure that they're looking for seven generations. It's not personal. Don't let it get personal. You're going to lose the fight right away. It's for the common good. <laughs>